So there is no evil matrix that is out to get you and out to keep you prisoner, except that which you give your power away to, for everything is just a fabrication of your mind anyway. You are both the prisoner, the prison guard, the jailer, the jailed. There is no inside or outside prison, there is only you. Who you are cannot be imprisoned. Who you are cannot be bounded to anything except the imagination of a prison that you choose to play victim in. And this gives the power back to you. Now, what happens when you seem to be in a planetary system, you find yourself incarnated in what you can call a human body, and there's other human bodies that seem to be possessed by this disease, this virus called limitation, smallness, uh, victimhood, being something other than infinite consciousness. What is this addiction to being something other than who you are? Well, firstly, it's a game. But secondly, it's just mass consciousness. It's just a movement of energy. So what happens when you start to shine your mirror uh, of who others truly are just by being yourself. Well, I can tell you from my experience, uh, I feel as if there's very, very little cords uh, that attach me to mass consciousness now. Uh, I had to buy into a certain amount in order to have an experience of smallness, um, to know what it's like to condense myself down into anything other than uh, just the infinite consciousness I knew myself to be uh, in order to have an experience of human life. I chose a planet that allowed that mastery of deception within myself. But now that I find two chords, you have the silver chord, which has never been broken, which is the chord between you and your higher self. And no matter how much you cover that up with um, distortion and confusion and separation and stories, that chord between you and the source, which has never been broken, you could say as a scuba diver that dives into the sea and never is actually uh, broken from the chord that gets into the boat. It's really just an illusion that you're in this ocean, uh, disconnected from source. So this is the silver chord I speak about. Now, a lot of these terminologies are really just coming through uh, in terms of silver chord I've heard before with Adamus, but... The bronze cord I'd like to introduce, which is your cord that you have seem to be attached to a, a collective, a planetary system consciousness, right? So you could say the whole mastery is the willingness to see through the bronze cord that attaches you to a collective matrix. It's a cord that is not actually there. That's the illusory cord. So you'll find yourself in a planetary system where... People seem to be prisoners, right, to their thoughts. They seem to really be addicted to this prison mentality that they're in some kind of trapped thing. And if they were to get out, then then they would be free, right? This is the addiction. But if you ever speak to someone that feels like they're jailed, in order for a matrix thought system to keep itself going, to sustain itself, it has to keep itself guarded. So the jailer becomes the jail guard very quickly when you start to reflect back to them that really there is no prison there is no fence there is no anything keeping them in and so very quickly they'll turn into the prison guard in order to keep the matrix system uh, real in, in their mind because whether i see it or not doesn't change their opinion i could see very clearly and i do that there is no matrix outside your mind there is no prison there is no governmental system that's keeping you uh, locked away apart from that which you choose to give it power right so when you start to, to reflect back this, these things your very presence will be uh, threatening to their idea of what their prison is it's almost like an invitation um, I have to be very careful where I go what I say um, because some people don't want to be woken up I find it so much more um, joyous just being around people that um, uh, are willing to step into this frequency right and uh, I don't bypass, I go out and a lot of the time people say things, family members, friends that are really into the ideas of limitation and you can reflect back to it what you know and just your mere presence of your vibration starts to dissolve um, the 
the bound the bounds that they've set on themselves of uh, limitation so that's what i wanted to say today was don't feel down if others um, the prisoners of their thoughts they turn into prison guards in order to keep and sustain a matrix of thought going because all the matrix is is a condensation of energy it's just a it's just an energy pattern that's all it is it, there's no drama there's no story there's no being that's webbing this whole matrix that has the rest of humanity under a spell no it's just a it's just an experiment there's just a cluster of energy and it's an experiment to see which clusters of energy which clusters of consciousness seem to choose freedom choose uh, service to the whole uh, positive polarity and which seem to go along with the negative polarity which seems to go along with the addiction to um, really not breaking free out of the condensation of um, the one substance of God. God can either be expanded or uh, contracted. They're, they're the same substance always. Uh, and so you're just seeing reality, perceiving reality on different planes of uh, perspective. That's all it is. There's nothing even wrong with the matrix. Like, you get to experience what it's like to have a heroic story out of the Matrix. You get people like Andrew Tate that are so... You know what? Andrew Tate displays a lot of a certain energy which is refreshing today, but at the same time you can see where he then gets lost in this blaming of the Matrix where he's forgotten that he chose to incarnate here in order to experience what it's like to be in a se separation, what it feels like to be... Um, at the effect of a Matrix and, you know... It, He's got a lot of power, but he needs to back that up with some wisdom as well of context, of this galactic context. Um, I'm sure I meet him one day. I get a sense that um, he may be open to these topics because, yeah, whatever. That's all the incarnational agreements anyway. But in terms of the Matrix, there's nothing wrong with the Matrix. Every person that seems to be jailed is always done by choice. Um, and I will always back that up with experience. Um, the prison is really just a fag fragment of your mind. It's just a fabrication of what you believe yourself to be. We're all sat in a field with no with no fences. Nothing outside your own mind. Freedom is a choice. You decide the walls. You decide the ceiling. You're on both sides of the wall. You just get to move the wall. And that's really what this density is about. It's the choice, it's the choice point. This is why it's so fun. Because in every other density, you just know you're the creator, so it gets very, very boring. But in this one, it's like a game of blackjack. You never know. You have a rough idea of where your consciousness will go within the timeline of this incarnation but you can only set certain themes that you like to explore and within those themes it's quite a wide corridor anyway but here it was found very quickly what it wanted and it wanted service to the whole it didn't it it's not that it was heroic and saw that service to the self was like no it was very much service to the self just didn't work <laughs> <laughs> it's tried it trust me power it, even other incarnations came back of having um dictatorship over large groups of people and in this incarnation it's been almost like a remembering of that in order to say well is this is this what you want again because calm all karma is is the play of energy it's just the play of coming of experiencing the ripples that you've sent out by trying to be someone else by trying to have power over others, you'll feel what it's like to be at the other side. It's just physics. It's nothing dramatic. There's no God outside of yourself forcing this karma on you. You make choices and you experience the consequences of the ripples of consciousness of how that feels to impose on something or someone else, uh, make someone else into a someone else <laughs> and then experience the ripples of that. And so this whole incarnation has been a complete uh, burning up of karma. It's like a burnt through it all. And now it's just... Um, the purpose of this incarnation is service to the whole mastery of choosing love, mastery of teaching, mastery of creativity, 
uh, pushing the cutting edge consciousness uh, in the planetary system, and then it's on to the other realms. It's on to the other realms. But there's still work to be done here. There's two little dogs walking past. So you don't get dogs in the other realms. They're not as physical, they're not as dense, they're thought images in the mind. See, everything manifests instantly in the spirit realm. It's no fun. See, we, t we tend to try and get back to the spirit realm so so quickly. The spirit realm isn't anywhere else. It's right here in your heart. But when you remembered that there was a choice point to come here, to experience delay in your manifestations, the ability to have Something to work towards, something to master, something to learn from. Your soul becomes such a master. It masters growth. It masters themes that you can't explore in instant manifestation. I'll tell you what, the consciousness in this being, in this incarnation, has soared in the last two months, I'd say. To the point where, like, I didn't realise the frequency would pick up this quickly through choice. Maybe it was a pre-incarnation thing. It was like the, for the first 10 to 15 years of your life, you'll just feel very strange, very alienated from the rest of the planetary system. Then from age 15 to 20, you'll really find yourself in terms of who you are, which made you even more alienated. This, I'm speaking to my younger self right now because there is a a younger self right now listening to me. This is how the universe works. You have an infinite number of selves that are all learning from each other. And so I'm speaking to my previous self right now. And I'm probably speaking to one of yours as well, because I can act as a teacher and you act as a teacher to me. All of it, all of creation is working together in this pulsing. And so if I speak to my previous self, the first fifth, let's say I'm briefing on how the life went, because there's always a life review at the end of an incarnation, right? So I'd say the first 15 years, you're gonna feel very alienated, but this is gonna give you the drive to really find what it is you want out of life, what it is that you're here for. From 15 to 20, there's going to be a deep search, a deep anguish, uh, deep suffering. This is where it really ramps up. From 20 to 25, so I'm now 25, that's the year of uh, exponential growth in consciousness. Uh, the frequency picked up tenfold. And then from the age of, what am I now? The last two months, so between summer to Christmas of 2023, exponential everything starts flooding back uh, the incarnations in egypt italy other you know just 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 intuitions but still very helpful for this lifetime working with saint germain in the in the energy schools mystery schools of egypt um et contact specialist for for the next um wave of Palladians that come down like all of this stuff would be fucking insane to my younger self but now it's like yeah of course it's like a veil that lifts technology's coming through free energy it's just so obvious how it's going to come about teleportation which i think will actually be in the next incarnation i feel like the planetary system's not ready for that But in terms of speaking to my younger self, from age 20 to 25, you'll slo slowly loosen your grip on trying to fit into that collective as well. Because you'll see that they're just as confused as the rest of them. <laughs> and you know best, you know you know yourself, and it's a deep trust that you, you wonder why others don't trust themselves. And then you really start to fall in love with yourself. There's a point where you're on the brink of just falling madly back in love with yourself. You wonder why you didn't do it earlier. But it gave you the taste of what it's like to really abandon yourself and to come back and realise you were you were lovable all along, only by yourself. You can only gift yourself love. No one else can. They can only reflect back the love that you're willing to give to yourself. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. Alright, I love you. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.